A Legacy of Shadows, The Sicilian Genesis The story of the Mafia begins amidst the sun-drenched hills of Sicily. Historically a crossroads of empires, Sicily had long been plagued by instability. Out of this fertile ground for lawlessness, the Mafia emerged in the 19th century. It began as small groups offering protection to a population desperate for security. These bands exploited the Sicilian people's mistrust of authority, offering protection services in exchange for loyalty and silence. Their power grew as they infiltrated local businesses, using intimidation and violence to control markets. The citrus industry, a cornerstone of the Sicilian economy, became a prime target. The seeds of a criminal empire had been sown, ready to be transplanted to a new land ripe with opportunity, America. The Black Hand's grip early mafia activities, the late 19th and early 20th centuries witnessed a mass exodus of Italians seeking a better life in America. Among them were members of the Sicilian Mafia fleeing poverty and seeking new opportunities. These early mafiosi, often referred to as Black Hand gangs, preyed on their fellow Italian immigrants. Extortion became their stock in trade. Shopkeepers, laborers, and even the wealthy were targeted, forced to pay for protection or face the consequences. The Black Hand operated with a chilling blend of brutality and secrecy. Their calling card, a black handprint often left at the scene of a crime, instilled terror in their victims. The police, often overwhelmed and hampered by language barriers, struggled to combat this growing menace. It became clear that for the Mafia to truly thrive in America, a new structure, a more organized and unified approach, was needed. America a new world of opportunity. The United States, with its booming economy and rapidly growing cities, presented fertile ground for the Mafia. The influx of Italian immigrants, many facing poverty and discrimination, provided a ready pool of potential recruits. The Mafia offered a sense of belonging and protection in a new and often hostile land. The American Mafia adapted to its new environment, adopting new methods and forging alliances with other criminal organizations. The focus shifted from extortion to more lucrative ventures, such as gambling, loan sharking, and labor racketeering. They infiltrated unions, using intimidation and violence to control leadership positions and extort businesses. However, it was the advent of prohibition that would truly catapult them to power and notoriety. The Roaring Twenties Bootlegging and Bloodshed the 1920s, a decade of social upheaval, ushered in an era of unprecedented opportunity for the American Mafia. The passage of Prohibition in 1920, outlawing the manufacture and sale of alcohol, proved to be a windfall for organized crime. The Mafia quickly seized control of this lucrative trade, establishing vast bootlegging operations. Speakeasies, clandestine bars, sprang up in cities across America, becoming fronts for Mafia-controlled distribution networks. The immense profits generated by bootlegging fueled a dramatic rise in mafia power and violence. Turf wars erupted as rival gangs clashed in bloody confrontations. This period of intense competition highlighted the need for greater organization and cooperation within the mafia. The Castella Marie's War paved the way for a new generation of mafia leaders who recognized the need for a more structured approach. Section 5 the Commission, Forging a Criminal Empire The Castella Marie's War proved to be a turning point in the history of the American Mafia. From the ashes of this conflict emerged a new leadership, led by figures like Charles Lucky Luciano and Meyer Lansky. In 1931 a pivotal meeting took place marking the establishment of the Commission. This governing body was designed to mediate disputes, maintain order and coordinate activities among the various Mafia families. The Commission aimed to regulate the Mafia's activities, ensuring a more stable and profitable criminal underworld. It established rules and protocols, dividing territories, and mediating disputes to prevent all-out wars. This new era of cooperation ushered in a golden age for the American Mafia. The Mafia, once a collection of loosely affiliated gangs, had transformed into a sophisticated and powerful criminal empire. Section 6. The War Years, A Pact with the Devil The outbreak of World War II presented both challenges and unforeseen opportunities for the American Mafia. With the United States' entry into the war, the government's focus shifted towards national security. The Mafia, with its control over waterfront labor unions, saw a chance to exploit the wartime chaos. In a controversial move the U.S. Navy struck a deal with the Mafia. 
Charles Lucky Luciano despite being imprisoned, was approached to use his influence to secure the docks of New York City. In exchange for his cooperation, Luciano was promised a reduced sentence and eventual deportation to Italy. This wartime collaboration highlighted the Mafia's reach and influence. However, as the war drew to a close, the government's attention returned to domestic issues, including the growing problem of organized crime. Section 7 Post-War Expansion Infiltrating Legitimate Business The post-war era witnessed a period of unprecedented economic prosperity in the United States. The Mafia recognized the potential for expanding their operations beyond traditional criminal activities. They set their sights on infiltrating legitimate businesses, seeking to launder their ill-gotten gains. The construction industry, fueled by post-war reconstruction, became a prime target. The Mafia, through its control over labor unions, manipulated bids, extorted contractors, and siphoned off funds from large-scale projects. They also invested in real estate, using their illicit profits to acquire properties and develop lucrative commercial ventures. The entertainment industry, particularly Las Vegas, attracted the Mafia's attention. Las Vegas transformed into a symbol of both the post-war boom and the Mafia's growing influence. Section 8, The Crackdown Begins, Public Exposure and Legal Battles The decades following World War II witnessed a growing awareness of the pervasive influence of organized crime in American society. Media exposes shed light on the Mafia's grip on labor unions, their infiltration of legitimate businesses, and their corrupting influence on politicians. The 1950-1951 Kefauver hearings captivated the nation, exposing the inner workings of the Mafia. In 1957, a clandestine meeting of Mafia leaders in Appalachian, New York backfired spectacularly. Local police raided the gathering, confirming the existence of a national crime syndicate. Law enforcement agencies stepped up their efforts to dismantle the Mafia. The Mafia, facing increasing pressure, found their once impenetrable wall of silence beginning to crumble. Section 9. The RICO Act, a powerful weapon against organized crime. For decades, law enforcement agencies struggled to combat the Mafia's sophisticated criminal enterprise. However, in 1970, a powerful new tool emerged, the Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, better known as RICO. The RICO Act revolutionized the fight against organized crime by targeting the organization itself. It allowed prosecutors to charge individuals involved in a pattern of racketeering activity, even if they did not directly participate in the underlying crimes. The RICO Act introduced severe penalties, including lengthy prison sentences and the seizure of assets. The impact of the RICO Act was immediate and far-reaching, with high-profile prosecutions becoming more common. The RICO Act, combined with a new generation of dedicated prosecutors, dealt a significant blow to the Mafia's power and influence. Section 10. Adapting to Survive. New Challenges and Transformations. By the late 20th century, the American Mafia faced a confluence of challenges that threatened its very existence. Aggressive law enforcement efforts had decimated their ranks, imprisoned their leaders, and seized their assets. The traditional rackets that had long been the lifeblood of the Mafia declined in profitability. The Mafia diversified their criminal portfolio, expanding into drug trafficking, money laundering, and cybercrime. These new ventures carried greater risks and attracted attention from a new breed of law enforcement agencies. The Mafia also faced competition from new players in the global criminal underworld. The criminal landscape had become more crowded, more competitive, and far more dangerous. Section 11. The Unending Struggle, Modern Anti-Mafia Efforts. The Mafia, despite significant setbacks, has proven to be a remarkably resilient organization. Modern anti-mafia efforts have shifted to combat the evolving nature of organized crime. Law enforcement agencies have increased international cooperation, sharing intelligence and coordinating efforts. Financial investigations target the flow of illicit funds, aiming to disrupt criminal operations. Asset forfeiture laws allow authorities to seize assets acquired through criminal activity. The fight against the mafia requires a multifaceted approach that addresses the root causes of organized crime. Public awareness campaigns are crucial in encouraging resistance to Mafia influence. The fight against the Mafia is an ongoing struggle, requiring vigilance, innovation, and a steadfast commitment to justice.